As you can see, there's a lot of dust flying up in my face. The right way to do is with a dust mask. But uh, this little quick grip will just knock it out. You can see I'm starting to give it that shape already. Shape is all you want to get with a real abrasive sandpaper. As you get the shape you want, you can go up to a higher grit and get a real fine finish. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm just basically taking a block of wood and wrapping sandpaper around it. Everyone knows about a sanding block. What that's going to do is make sure I take out my high spots first. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just using your hand or you know something that can flex, you'll get pressure points, and every your high spots and low spots will get sanded at the same time. You don't want your low spots to get taken out until your high spots, or, or before your high spots rather. You want to make sure your high spots get evened out and um, eliminated before you start working on your low spots. So the way to do that is a sanding block. A sanding block will apply even pressure across your rings and that way you can't apply pressure to either in either direction um, more so than the other. Much better. Now we've got our rough shape, we've run our 100 and our 150 grit sandpaper. I'm going to set up to our 240. But before I do, I'm going to point out, if you look, the natural cork has contoured versus the composite cork based on the way I sh was shaping it. Um, you can see I was going back and forth with a sanding block in my fingers. What I was doing with my fingers is trying to put pressure in between the accent pieces, which is the dyed cork here, the blue cork, just to kind of make those grooves. And it's just one of those things you can do. Um, and an added aspect to building your own custom rod. So I'm going to hit it with this 240, fine down our finish, then finalize our shape, pull off our tape, and see how it looks. Check that out. Nice blue finish.
All right, that's about it. Take it down to 240. Personally, for me, it's the perfect texture. It's not too smooth, not too rough. You can go all the way up to 600. You don't even have to go to 240 if you don't want to. But um, 240 is my preference. So I'm gonna clean this up and take a look. As I'm taking the tape off, you can see really how it's gonna look with that real seat. And uh, you can decide you know, if you wanna bring the sides in a little bit more of the cork, or if you're happy with what you've got. Um, personally, I'm, I'm gonna tape this down a little bit more. When you're fishing, you know, your hand just like that, your palm's gonna rest right there. I'm gonna get rid of that lip so my palm fits perfectly. And then my thumb rests right here. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that lip as well. And uh, yeah, beautiful rod. So all I'm gonna do is just take my tape once more. Protect the real seat. I'm gonna go back to my 80 grit paper here. It'll help me get that shape quicker. And then I'll hit it with my 240 again. Looks pretty good. Got a few rough spots back here still. Take those out. Hit it once more with my 240. Smooth it out. And we're good to go. As you can see, I'm not, but I would highly recommend wearing a dust mask. And what I normally do to prevent all this dust is have a shop vac, run it right next to me, and tape it right here to where the suction hose is sitting right here, just taking that dust right out as it comes off. You have zero mess, zero dust in the air, but unfortunately for the video, we would have zero audio. The tough part about sanding down cork rings on a rod wrapper is this right here. Obviously, I couldn't get to this handle or this part of the handle. What I'm going to do is take this out of the lathe, sand it down by hand. That'll work fine for this demonstration. But really, the right way to do it is rather than put the plug in the rod already and epoxy it in there before I shape, the right thing to do would be Get a piece of blank or a dowel that fits inside the blank. And I imagine this cap, we had not put this cap in yet. We put a dowel inside the blank that fits snug up in there. Don't glue it or epoxy it, but just stick it in there to where the friction will keep it tight. And then put that you know, dowel you know, five, six inches outside of here and put that in the chuck. That will allow you full access to your handle. That way you can shape the entire thing. Now all I'm going to do is just Go back to my file and sandpaper and uh, finish this up that way. You really can. Uh, either way, it's just a matter of personal preference and what tools you have. I mean, again, it's your rod. There's no right or wrong way to do it.